And welcome back to VMworld Live. I'm here with Mason Weda, who uh, leads the technical marketing team for our end user computing unit. Thanks, John. <laughs> Mason, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. So let's talk. We just had two releases, two major releases of our right. uh, two of our um, end user computing products: View 4.5, uh, ThinApp 4.6. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's in those new releases. Right. So let's just highlight one of the key features in ThinApp 4.6. Um, it's a feature we call ThinDirect. Okay. And as you know, in a lot of the uh, Win7 migrations that are taking place, there's a lot of questions about applications that have been written to older versions of Internet Explorer and how you actually go deploy older versions into a Win7 environment. So what ThinDirect does is it's actually able to um, create an environment where when you launch an application that's dependent on an older version of Internet Explorer, it actually ties that application to um, a hosted version of that browser, launches the browser, brings up that older version within that browser, and presents it in your Win7 environment. So for instance, IE6 or 7. And then what you're able to do simultaneously is launch an IE8 browser in that same Windows 7 environment. Okay, and wow, you wouldn't be able to do that at all because usually a, a copy of Windows can only run one copy exactly, of IE. Exactly, exactly. Windows 7 doesn't support those older versions. At all, Internet at all Explorer. Yeah. yeah. And then, I know, and the, and the, the problem you're solving there is uh, there are a lot of web apps that are, that are still IE6 only. Precisely. Sometimes they have ActiveX components. Precisely, so customers don't want to go back and invest in rewriting those apps. And we tell customers there's business value here because you don't need to touch your applications. Hmm. That, I mean, and I, actually I need that for a few apps that, I, that we run, <laughs> sure. I think. So. No problem, <laughs> get you a copy. <laughs> That's good. So that comes out in thin app 4.6. Yep. Uh, we talked a little bit about View 4.5 right. as well uh, in the last segment, which especially like the tiered storing and some yes. things like that. Another feature of View 4.5 is the off, I'm, and I want to get the name right, the, uh, the offline local client, mode. local mode. Right. So that, that refers to the ability for a user to actually take their uh, virtual desktop environment, download it to um, a laptop and take it on the road with them. So they can actually work in their virtual desktop, virtual machine, disconnected from a network environment. So it's particularly useful for uh, those of us that travel a lot, who remain disconnected for long periods of time. And then when you reconnect back to your environment, um, there's an automatic sync up where the deltas are automatically synced to um, a mirrored VM on the back end. And then presumably that mirrored VM you could then, you could then access uh, from a different device or, 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 and, or well, once you're logged off. Once you're logged off, yeah. yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Interesting. And then the other big feature that you mentioned uh, just briefly was tiered storage. Mm -hmm. And I know Scott talked about it earlier, and what we published uh, this week at uh, VMworld Copenhagen are actually a couple of documents um, on, that specifically leverage the tiered storage feature. Um, the view reference architecture for stateless desktops, um, and then an analyst report on the business value of that. So in the first one, the reference architecture, um, we actually leverage the tiered storage feature to create a new architecture for stateless desktops. And by doing this, we're able to create a desktop environment that's very easy to deploy, um, it's very responsive because the user's uh, desktop environment lives on enterprise class SSD, um, and it's also very, very low cost. In fact, the cost, we believe, um, is actually sub $250 per desktop. That cost includes the data center infrastructure hardware, which is the network compute and storage. Hmm. And that seems like it's substantially less than uh, yes. you would be provisioning yes. either traditional PCs or, or right. other. Well, there's, a, there's a couple data points. The first data point is about a year ago, um, the lowest cost achievable was about uh, $650 of infrastructure cost for a desktop. This architecture kind of segments users because it directly addresses the needs of a more of a task worker environment. So every time somebody in that call center, that library, that kiosk environment logs in, they get a pristine, uh, fresh desktop. Okay. If so, this so the documents that came out. There's you said there's several. There's a reference right. architecture. Document there's a full or? reference architecture in which we validated um, at over a thousand desktops this task worker environment under load, um, and uh, actually created this desktop environment, including all the network and storage requirements. Exercised all those virtual machines for a period of time. Charted all the, uh, the CPU and memory consumption requirements, um, and that's the technical document targeted at architects and solution consultants okay. to help them um, repeatedly deploy these desktops. And then there's a companion paper that goes with it that articulates the business value. So if the question was, well, how much does this infrastructure cost, um, this analyst paper outlines that. I think it's interesting, I mean, VU 4.5, um, 
as it came out, you know, had time. To, there was a, there was a long beta period, had yes. time to mature. Yes. And what I've noticed over the, especially here at VMworld mm -hmm. this year in San Francisco and and Copenhagen, is that many of our partners then have had time then to release their own sets of reference architectures. Right. So right. It, it from mm -hmm. both from VR and from our partners, this seems. It, one, it seems really interesting that there are uh, mm -hmm. many reference architectures to mm -hmm. choose from, mm -hmm. and I'd be kind of curious, just in general terms, mm -hmm. uh, what you, how you, is, ha, as you look at different approach, are these, have people approached the problem differently? How, what do you look at when you see these different right. reference architectures? Well, so the first architecture we published was in the fall of 2008, mm -hmm. and then in 2009 we published a new one with View 4, and then here we are with 4, 5, and tiered storage. So fundamentally, the architectures don't differ in their fundamental approach to how you build a repeatable, scalable environment. So for instance, it's, it's constructed in the concept of building blocks, a certain number of users per building blocks, and then you can scale these building blocks horizontally in approximately chunks of a thousand users. That's the fundamental architecture. What, what partners do, storage and networking partners, is they look at that architecture and then determine how their products and technologies fit into it in terms of performance. So the fundamental architecture is pretty consistent across all the partners. Okay, yeah. Well, it's nice though that, that uh, yes. the whole ecosystem is there in support of this, pro of yes. this product suite. Yeah, the new architecture with 4.5 four, um, really is the first attempt to segment by uh, user characteristics. And by doing that, we can take a lot of what was traditionally on SAN, put it onto SSD on the local host card, drive down costs, increase performance. Right, right, taking advantage of, of, of local storage where exactly. it makes sense. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so what, uh, uh, View's been out for a while now, You're in, we're here in Copenhagen, mm -hmm. what's the reaction been from, from customers? The reaction has been terrific. We've uh, we presented this architecture in San Francisco, we presented it here, a total of three or four sessions. Um, even after the paper was just published this week, we've already got a, a list of partners and customers who are interested in taking a look at the stateless approach and actually uh, piloting it uh, as soon as next week. Oh wow, Yeah, Great. it's fast. <laughs> it works. <laughs> The um, it's been interesting. It's, in it's interesting that I it's again to, to the ecosystem. I work, you know, I, I work with our bloggers, and, yes. and uh, a lot of them are from our partners. Right. And, and it's just it just seems like uh, there's more and more interest in, the, in desktop virtualization. Well, there's there's always been a lot of interest because it's the common challenge that every organization has is how do they manage this complex desktop environment? And as Scott said earlier, it's complex because it touches all pieces of an infrastructure, storage, network, security, end users, devices. It reaches out across an infrastructure is what makes it challenging. Right. And But now it just seems like it's, maybe it's more practical. Well, but this is also what makes it equally rewarding because yeah. once you figure it out, you can derive tremendous business value from this. Right. Yeah. Well, Mason, thanks for coming on and John, talking with, about the uh, reference architecture a little bit. If people want to find the reference architecture, where can they find it? Over They'll find on? it on uh, VMware.com under the View product resource pages. Okay, yeah. great. Thanks for coming. Thanks, John.